there's one other person who has signed up, George Wolf, representing the Indiana Green Party, to testify. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for hearing me today. Uh, I was originally going to speak in support of the bill as proposed in its original form, which I interpreted to include independent and also uh, since third party candidates, so to speak, uh, like the Green Party, who don't have ballot access are really in the, kind of like independent candidates are really independent because we don't have ballot access. However, since the committee has just passed an amendment eliminating the bill's application to the independent candidates, then I will now speak against the bill. In 2018, I was the Green Party candidate for Secretary of State. At that time, based on the 2% formula referred to in Representative Manning's bill, I needed 26,699 petition signatures to obtain ballot access. If I were to run in 2022, Given the number of Hoosiers who voted in 2018, I would need 46,000 petition signatures, valid petition signatures. And since so many people sometimes make a mistake when they sign the forms, I would really need many more than that, perhaps 60,000, 80,000 in order to get 46,000 valid signatures. This number far exceeds what other states in the United States require and creates an undue burden on independent and third party candidates. House Bill 1134 in its original form, which I understood included independent candidates, and if amended also to include the Secretary of State of office, corrects for this and provides equal and unbiased, unbiased ballot access for all candidates. This bill would then be comparable to Senator, Senator Gray Walker's ballot access bill that I testified in support of during a Senate Elections Committee hearing in 2019. Now, I realize there is concern that the possibility of more candidates gaining ballot access risks creating a, quote, spoiler effect in election races. The potential for this became apparent in the past November's race for governor, where the Libertarian candidate received over 230,000 votes, many of which were votes that otherwise may have been cast for the Republican candidate. And I know this was brought up already, this possibility. In a future highly competitive race, 230,000 votes cast for a third party or independent candidate would likely be enough to spoil the election for one of the major party candidates. The answer to this problem, however, is not to further restrict ballot access. Rather, the answer is to institute ranked choice voting. Ranked choice voting eliminates the spoiler effect and also ensures that there will always be a majority winner when a race for an elected office involves more than two candidates. Representative Sue Arrington, who serves on this committee, has submitted a ranked choice voting bill, House Bill 1216, and I encourage you to schedule a hearing for this bill. In conclusion, we need more voices, not fewer voices, contributing to the political conversation. The Indiana Green Party opposes House Bill 1134 in its amended form because it is a missed opportunity to correct for the unfair petition signature requirement that places an unjust and undue burden on third party and independent candidates who desire to run for a statewide office. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. And Are there any questions, questions for Mr. Wolf? See none, thank you for being here. They could throw tomatoes if they wanted because I'm all protected. <laughs> <laughs> thank thank you. you for being here, Mr. Wolf.